Hey guys, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for joining in. It's Sunday. Um, sure you guys have been following the news at this point. If you're Haitian, you've been watching the news, you know everything that's been going on in Haiti. But here at Lunia Suite, I'm a strong believer of not really sharing or posting things until I have a strong understanding of what's going on. So all day yesterday, of course, well, since Friday, since everything hit, we've been following the news. We've been part of, you know, all of the the group chat, the WhatsApp chats, and basically keeping track of everything's going on. I've been talking to people in Haiti and everything else. Now, I know one thing's for sure. A lot of us, especially Haitian Americans, don't always necessarily follow um don't always follow politics, right, as much as we should. And a large majority of the time, when politics is shared, it's normally in French, and a lot of us don't understand what's going on. So I'm always a strong believer in making sure we understand what's going on before, you know, we start making statements and saying what we're going to do and everything else. Because if we don't keep track of what's going on most of the time and then we just hear something happen, and we had this destruction, everything happened. You can't just jump the gun and start telling people what to do and, you know, doing all these things. So what I've done the last two days is that, right? Trying to make it, get an understanding of what was happening because two days ago, everyone was posting about, um, what's the thing, World Cup. And then now all of a sudden, you know, this didn't just happen. This obviously has been going on. So what I've done is like even the content you guys have seen me share, I vet it through this content. I read it. I make sure I understand. I check because there is a lot of stuff going on around. There's a lot of rumors. Yesterday there was a video of American troops landing um, in Haiti, which wasn't even true. So, you know, we have to basically always try to be careful about our narrative and what we're sharing about our own country and making sure, yes, we want people to know, yes, we want to bring awareness, but I also make sure that, you know, we're sharing the right information. So I always try to figure out a way to bring you guys the best possible information that I can for us to say, okay, moving on, how can we really help once we understand, you know, what's going on. So, Jacqueline Charles from Miami Herald has been covering this thing since it hit on Friday. She's actually the first person that made me aware this was even going on because she tweeted something about now that Brazil has lost, we can pay attention to the gas prices. So from there, I was like, wait, what's going on? What's this, you know, situation with the gas prices? So she is reporting. She's been reporting, but she's taking some time out to answer some questions for us. I just text her, letting her know that I am on live. So she can come, um, so she can come on and speak to us, um, really quick. She's never used Instagram Live before, so I'm literally like walking her through this. So I just message her, I'm still messaging her. Uh, so we can get her on here and we can actually find out, you know, what is actually going on. Cause so far, what do we know? The gas prices went up. People were very upset. And the president last night did a press conference where he said, well, he addressed everyone where he said, it's been suspended, meaning on hold. Doesn't mean it's not coming back. Flights are still canceled. I have a lot of people that's stuck in Haiti, the Cameron, Best Western. There's a lot of people that's literally, you know, still stuck there um, and can't even get back. And we don't even know when that's going to happen. Digicel and Natcom, people can barely, you know, um, call i heard people are running out of minutes and everything else so jacqueline is saying she's trying guys give me a second uh watch yes i'm trying to get her on so she says she's trying to connect <laughs> let's try to get jackie on She said, is it IGTV? No, IG Live. <laughs> Let me not laugh at her because I need her help. I don't see her. Sorry, guys, trying to get Jackie on. She's 
she's in the wrong place. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm going to say this from right now. For the people that are saying, that, can I speak Creole, this is going to be in English. Jackie will be speaking English, so I, you know, I'm, I'm just letting y'all know right now so you don't spend the whole time she's talking asking us to do it in English. Can I call her? Okay, Jackie, you should go on Linear Suite. You'll see where it says I'm live and click on that. Not my IGTV, not anything. Click on the logo where it says that I'm actually live. Oh, there you go. Okay, hold on, guys. I'm trying to get, let's get Jackie on. So waiting for Jacqueline Charles. There we Should go. I do this? Is that better? Hi. That's better. We got you. Welcome, welcome, Jackie. <laughs> Technology. We were just talking about you. I was like, this is her first time, guys. Just bear with us. Yes, bear with me. I usually do Facebook. <laughs> I know. I was like, no Facebook. We're doing Instagram. I'm going to take care of my Instagram people now. So, first of all, just to do another reintroduction, this is Jacqueline Charles from the Miami Herald. She's been Hello. with the Miami Herald over what, 10 years or 20 years? How long? Since you were like well, 14. Since I was 14. Since so you were 14. It's been a long time. Okay, so guys, if most of, like, Jackie basically cover all the Caribbean news um, for Miami Herald. But a large majority of what she covers, of course, is Haiti news because she is in Haiti. So she's been one of the main sources covering everything that's been going on with, since President Jovenel Moïse went into office. So this is one of the best people to get information from. So like we were saying before you came on, what we know so far is gas prices went up Friday. People got upset. And as of last night, the president said it's been suspended. So we wanted to basically go from there with you from Friday when you tweeted. Can you tell us what actually happened? Was this something that led up to that or it just happened? No, it just, it, not really. I mean, for months and months, the government has been hinting that gas prices were going to go up. The background of this is that since 2009, Haiti has basically been subsidizing gas or it hasn't been collecting the revenue that it should be getting on gas. And when we say gas, we're talking about kerosene, which poor people use to light their houses at night. We're talking about diesel, which a lot of rich people use for their vehicles and definitely for their generators. And gasoline, which most of us use for, you know, for our cars here in the States. So what happened in February, Haiti entered an agreement with the International Monetary Fund. And this is a sort of a watchdog agency that assists foreign countries when they are deeply in debt or when they need extra financing. And before the earthquake, the IMF got a lot of foreign governments, including the United States, to wipe Haiti's debt clean. Haiti owed a lot of money that it was not going to be able to pay. Today, for instance, Haiti owes $2 billion. Most of all is to Venezuela. Okay, but we'll set that aside. So just to give you the idea of the IMF and how powerful they are, when Jamaica was almost bankrupt uh, three years ago, they had to turn to the IMF to help. They are the bailout. So the IMF says, you know what, we're going to help you get $96 million dollars from the U.S., the World Bank, and the Inter-American Development Bank so that you can put, build some roads, you can do some development. But we need you to clean up your act. We need some transparency. We need you to reform EDH, the electricity company, meaning we need you to start collecting money from people. We need you to start charging people. And we need you to stop subsidizing um, the private firms that are providing electricity and getting a lot of money as a result of that. Um, we need you to also stop basically giving the gas away. We need you to collect what you're supposed to collect on the gas. And when gas prices, fuel prices go up internationally, then in Haiti, it needs to also go up. There is a law on the books in Haiti that was passed in 1995 that says with every shipment of fuel that comes, that, that, that comes, into, um, that, that comes into Haiti, 
you're supposed to adjust the gas prices at the pump accordingly, and they had not done that, okay? So that brings us to this year. So as a result of this year, the government has been hinting that we're going to raise the prices, we're going to raise the prices, but they had been dragging their feet, and they had not done it. At some point, I think two months ago, as an example, gas was 42% cheaper in Haiti than it was in the Dominican Republic. So finally, the government decided to do it, and they did it on the day that Haiti played, uh, not well, I should say Haiti, but it was Brazil playing Belgium. But Haitians are such fans of Brazil that it was like Haiti was in the World Cup. And the game began at 2 o'clock. At 2.12, I got the first graphic of what the new price increases were. And the new price increases um, essentially was 51% on kerosene. So imagine if you're poor and you're already struggling. Now you have to pay 51% more than you were paying last time on kerosene, 47% on diesel, and 38% on gasoline. I did not get into the details in terms of how much per gallon, but it's costly. And it's a population right now that is not working. The unemployment situation is far worse than it's been, I think, in a very long time. Uh, you know, people, the price, prices have gone up. Um, the cost of living has gone up. You know, as much as people may feel about the United Nations, the fact is that when they were there in the country, they were going to your restaurants, they were going to your hotels. Your economy was somewhat flowing. But now the international community is out. A lot of the NGOs are out. Um, the government it helped itself passed this law about not using U.S. dollars, that you have to use the good. Mm -hmm. And that is now, I think, maybe at 68 or 67 to 1 U.S. dollars. I mean, Haiti's a very expensive poor country. So when you take the fact that poor people feel that all of a sudden you now want me to pay more money at the pump, and then the transportation costs went up. So imagine if you lived um, in Petronville, and in Jalousie, and you had to go downtown Port-au-Prince, under the new transportation fares, you were going to pay 50% more. So this is when the population reacted. And, and I have to tell you, everybody's focusing on Friday, but prior to Friday, there had already been unrest and protests. The president lives in an area called Pillar and Five, and the tax office, the Haitian equivalent of the IRS, DGE, went in, and they demolished about seven houses and they claimed that it was for the security of the president. Um, lots of rumors about, you know, the president wanting to build a road or a helipad, but basically he wanted, they wanted to improve his access in and out. So imagine you have your house there, and all of a sudden the tax office comes, and they demolish it, and people didn't get a chance to go to court. So the population in that area, they were already blocking the roads, the, the La Boule Road, which is this main road that goes up, not just to Pelerin, but to La Boule, to Tomasen, yeah, I saw those videos. all those communities in, um, in, in the hills. So they were mm -hmm. already making life difficult for people who use that route to get home. And then on top of it, when the gas prices... That was just the final straw. And people have to understand that, this isn't, understand that this isn't just about, you know, fuel, fuel prices. There has been this um, malaise, as I've described it. And people have reacted to it two ways. There has been an indifference. And up until recently, people were going to Chile. You know, as long as I have Chile, I can hit the escape button. I don't have to worry. I don't care what they do here. Well, the Chile, Chile network, uh, has been shut off. That pipeline is no longer there right now. It's very difficult for Haitians to get to Chile. And so now they have to deal with the reality at home. And that reality at home is, despite the fact that the president and the prime minister talk about their caravan of change, which is, you know, building roads and electricity 24 hours, people say we are hungry and we need jobs. And right. what you have on the streets is you have this pure, raw, anger and frustration. And that's what makes what's happening today dangerous because in the past you know these things were somewhat organized somebody was behind it right so that's what i wanted to ask you about because that's the thing right so of course when this first hit a lot of people were saying this is organized someone's paying these people yeah. to go do this then i've heard people say early i spoke to someone that said there was actually a list put together what that's, companies what that's, business that's a, that they no. were going to attack so that's what? that's an old that is an old this is what we called in haiti uh a track uh, you know a track that that's okay. from several years ago that was flowing around one of the um 
election cycles and, 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 and what have you. So, yeah. so no. Um, I can tell you from folks that I have personally talked to and I personally know who got trapped into this situation. Yeah, and they I know had, a lot of people are still stuck yeah, in their homes And they're right having now. to negotiate and deal with people on the front lines that are in the barricades. You, you know, you see from them um, the raw emotion about why they're doing what they're doing. I, I have a friend who was caught in a back road in Cavallon, which is in the south, not even Port-au-Prince. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman said, look, gas prices went up. It's not good for us, and it's not good for you. So we can't let you cross. In areas where they let people cross, you know what they did? They had to leave their cars. Because now you driving a car, that's a luxury, you know, because you got to go to the gas pump. You could probably afford these gas prices. I mean, what you're having is, it, it's a lot of it is this sort of resentment and, 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 and it's a class thing. I, you know, I love the fact that millenniums, Haitian American millenniums want to connect with Haiti and they want to quote unquote change the narrative. But there is a reality of the country that when we don't live in Haiti, that we don't get. There's a reality of the country that when we have U.S. dollars, we are sometimes cushioned from. But for people who are there every single day, and they are my complexion, um, and, and they are living with it, there, there are these little things that start to, to, to build up. And sometimes when you stop and you look at the inequality, and, and I've had Haitians say to me, you know, Haitians in Haiti say, I wonder if the people in the hills really understand what it's like for the people at the bottom. You know, I, I, I wonder if they really know what we're, what, what, what we're going through. So, you know, right now what, what's happening, it's like a wait and see and, and watch it. Um, the violence yesterday was completely on call for, and, you know, people are looking at this, and they attack. They attack a lot of businesses, and they attack businesses of people who have assisted the, the people at the lower rung of the population. Um, and they attack businesses that employ some of these Haitians who attack their family members, and they probably did, you know, did not know it. And you have now taken a country into an economic back. So you're um, saying this wasn't just all gangs? I, you know, listen, it, 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 it is hard to, to say if it's just all gangs. But, 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 but what I can tell you is that there is something behind it, and it's not somebody that's paying people off. I, I think that, too, and the president alluded to this last night. If you want to believe that, that what happened yesterday, what happened on Friday is because some Warneg is using his money and having people to do this, then we are in serious trouble. That means you want to have people believe that there are not real social inequalities in this country, that people are not living on less than $2 a day, that the gas prices going up is not going to affect them, and that there is not a real deep economic malaise that's in this country, right. then we are going to be shooting ourselves in the foot. Because the reality is, is that there's a deep social and economic problem today and it has to be addressed, and it's not getting addressed by none of the people who are elected. And that is from the parliament all the way up. Some people have called for the, the, the resignation of the prime minister. The guys on the street today are calling for the resignation of the president. And I say to people, but you had an election. You know, you, you, you could have that, taken your that's my decision next question at the ballot you, box. Because it seems like this has been the trend, right? Every time they elect him president, something goes wrong, people are not happy, we get rid of him, right? So we get rid of this current president, then what? Why is it, like, how come there's not something set in place, like, where it's like, okay, there's at least another group of people to assist in talking to the president of the government to say, this is what these people are asking for, this is what, because people talk about lack of edu education, all oh, these people aren't intelligent, so they do this, they do that. Okay, so where's the group that will consider themselves being intelligent? Why don't they put something together where they can take it to the government and say, here's what the people on the ground want? Like, does well, the president first, really have to leave for things to change? Well, first of all, you need to have a, a president in the government that's willing to listen, okay? And in the last two administrations with Rene Preval, and I remember the food riots, and Rene Preval had a similar reaction to President Jovenel Moise, where... The, there were riots, and he took too long to break his silence to say something about it. And after those riots, Rene Preval had to bring the opposition to the table. 
and he had to bring people in, include people in, and not necessarily people who he liked or he thought people who were on his team, but he did it. Michel Matéli, the same thing. Michel Matéli came to a point in his administration where he could not, he could not govern. And he had this whole, these, all of these meetings and members of the opposition. And unfortunately, as a result of that, we end up with a lot more political parties than we started with. But the fact is, is that he had to have some sort of a coalition government. Up until now, Jovenel Moïse does not have a coalition government. I think that what has happened here has been a huge wake-up call for him. And it's not up to the people at the bottom now or the people on the outside or quote-unquote intelligent people or the people in the streets. It's up to the people in power to decide can you continue to be um, this government that is reflective of your party and of your position as opposed to bringing in a real coalition government? He talked about co uh, a coalition. And there will be people in the government that will argue with me that there are some people who are representative of other political parties. But let's get real. Uh, they are not there. And, 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 and you do not get the sense that there is a coalition government that, 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 that is there. As for Haiti and every election, Haitians do not believe in democracy at this point, and they don't believe in the ballot box, okay? Um, when you look at the last election, you look at the amount of people in the country of nearly, what, 11, 12 million people and how many people actually voted, you know, people decided to do three things. They either got on a plane and came to Miami, they stayed home, and some of those who went and voted, they sold their votes. I mean, I was on the ground, I was there. Days before the election, I asked people, who are you going to vote for? They said, well, I'm waiting to see who they give me. This is how much little faith that they have in, in, in the process, that things are going to change by virtue, of their, by virtue of their vote. So the mentality, unfortunately, today is to like, oh, whoever goes, goes. And then, you know what, we'll just deal with it with the protests in the streets. And we have to get out of that, you know. But, but it's also how the country was founded, right? You know, um, I mean, that was the, 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 the cry of, of the Haitian Revolution. Uh, so right now, where we are is in a wait and see and how the government is going to react and what's going to, yeah. to, 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 to happen. I was going to ask you about that, on the fact that a lot of people think this is over now because... He said he's suspended, but I think people are no. missing out on the word suspend, right? So before I even go into that question. Temporarily you know, suspend. Temporarily. temporarily. People are forgetting temporarily. Yeah, he didn't say it wasn't going to go back up. He said it's suspended. So, but before you answer that, a lot of people are asking, reading the comments about one of the things is, where's the police? Where was the police? There's been no pictures, no video of the police being on the ground. Where's the new military that we just well, had? With okay, well, yeah. Well, we won't, I'm not going to talk about the military, but... Um, I've seen pictures of the police, but like, for instance, today, the SWAT team went in and they extracted uh, a group of Haitian Americans who were stuck Which in the SWAT police team? station. U.S.? Um, the, SWAT the Haitian, no, the Haitian SWAT team. Forget oh, okay. the U.S. guys. There's, I'm like, because a lot of people are saying about the, the U.S. Mil there. There's no U.S. military. There's no U.S. military going in or anywhere else, okay? Haiti, you are on your way. The United Nations was there. Haiti had a lot of things to say about that. Well, today the United Nations is gone. You have a police force of basically 12,000 individuals. These people are not living in Petroville, in um, you know, gated communities, okay? They are living in Jalousie. They are living in Kafu. They're living in areas where mo outside of their immediate family, most of the people probably do not know that they are police officers. They are li living in gang-ridden communities. Okay, so, so as I said to somebody today, and it's not to excuse the fact that the police is not there, but it's the reality is that if that police officer who's in Kafu who takes public transportation to get to work every day, and now he can't get to work because there's no public transportation, you say, well, why can't he come out of his house and he starts policing right there? Well, the next thing, he's basically going to be a dead, man, a dead man walking. One of the three individuals that were killed was a police officer. Two police stations were actually set on fire. You have a relatively young police force that's still trying to be, be professionalized. They don't even have vehicles. This is the reality. They don't have vehicles. So they have been there and they have been trying to, you know, um, provide some law and order, but they also were taken off guard, you know, by, by this. And, and the mob, I mean, yesterday at the Best Western Hotel, it was 300 people. They set seven cars on fire. And I had a friend of mine who was watching this She's like right there. She says when the police came, they were afraid. You know, we're used to cops and having that tough guy, 
you know, image they're doing this. And this is a police force that they have been, you know, that they've been rebuilding. And they didn't train, they didn't train for this because what has happened, and this is what somebody explained to me, is that the raw emotion and the anger that they've encountered on the roads and the determination of the people putting up these barricades. And I had several people say, the one thing the police cannot do is start shooting at people. Because if they start shooting at people, we're going to have an even worse explosion than we have now. This is the situation. It's very complicated. It's very delicate. And it's very volatile. And today, some people in some communities took the opportunity to, to try to resume a sense of normalcy. In Tomasin, yeah. for instance, some people went to church, but those churches let out early. Some people say, you know what, we're running out of food. Let me go see if I can get yeah, to, I to, have, to a grocery I spoke store. To, I spoke to a lot of people, including like artists and influencers that's been stuck in their house. Um, yes. I got a call this one. My friend was like, "All I, I, I would do anything right now you know, just to have something to eat because no one was ready for this. So they didn't go grocery shopping. They didn't anything. No. So people are stuck at home with no food. They can't leave and things like that. So even now on day, this is day three. Day three. Mm -hmm. So we're not, this is not even calming down a little bit or. I think it's coming, I think it's coming down a little bit, but it's still very sketchy. I mean, um, Delta Airlines had a flight out today, but I had some friends who took it and it was very sketchy and scary for them, you know, for them to get there. Um, this this family that was stuck in Cabaret, they wanted to go to the Cameroon, and the road is impassable because Akaya is already a hot place, you know, it's a people frustration. I mean, what you have is a population that's frustrated. And before, when it was really, when it was organized, and you can go and you can pay the person who's organized, you can pay them off, you can give them a, you know, a little something, something to hold them over. Today, you know, there are no unions that are, that are behind these strikes, so to go to. There are different people in the opposition that are trying, of course, take credit for it, but they're not in the opposition is weak and they have their own issues. Um, I think what you have is just this, this level of frustration and the question is how long can these people hold out? And Did, you know, do you the think the happen. do you think the president address helped or hurt any last night? I think the president needed to have a speechwriter, and um, the president spoke for twenty three minutes. He took almost ten minutes before he addressed the situation, and the rest of his and he blamed other people for the decision. And he spent most of his speech talking about him and talking about his program. And by all accounts, from other people that I've talked to is both the president and the prime minister in the addresses that they gave to the nation, they missed the boat on that. It did not help the situation. Wow. And so now, people so did not, and let me just say this, people did yeah. not really listen to, 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 to the speech because sometimes it's not what you hear, it's what you don't hear. First of all, when the prime minister put out his, um, the announcement on Twitter, it, it was temporarily suspended. And when the president talked about it, he began by saying he, he, he began by saying that um, that he uh, what did he, he he says that he could not oh that it was mal it was badly communicated okay and it, he, so he says because it was badly communicated it was like you know you saying because we didn't really do what we were supposed to do this is why it went bad. But he absolutely gave no concrete indication that they that this thing would not come back. And and honestly, yeah. at this point, I really don't, don't know if Haiti is in a position to completely do away, uh, you know, with these price increases because there's ninety six million dollars at stake. And the reality, people, is that Haiti today is one hundred and fifty million dollars in the hole. This government has a huge deficit. It's a hundred and fifty million dollar deficit that they have. That means the teachers are not getting paid. Police officers are not getting paid. That's something I'm trying to confirm. But it's been told to people that the police officers, you know, had, had not got paid. So that may also explain, you know, what you didn't see in the street. Um, but the, you know, we're always robbing Peter to pay Paul. And so this is $96 million that Haiti really needs, and they need to get that sort of off the gas. Now, is there some other way that they can approach this? I'm not sure, but, but that's what being president is about, right? It's about yeah. tough times. So another question, of course, that, you know, of course, this is floating everywhere. Of course, us, you know, Haitian Americans, we see these things. We're outraged. We're mad. 
sometimes we're not really as informed as we like to be. We don't understand most of the conversations in French. Is, but we're like, we want to do something. We want to do something. But one of the things that the conversations I've been having, this is not a Hurricane Matthew type situation. We can't just pack boxes and, you know, take food and do like right now to, to fix the situation or whatever the case may be. So is there really room for us to like Haitian Americans to do something or but not just Haitian Americans but diasporas what can we even do in this moment especially since we don't even know what's next is we the president didn't give a plan I'm sorry you there yeah your 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 things reloading but we can hear you okay yeah um, we can hear you okay i think that first of all everybody can say so sit tight and 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 wait okay um because we're always dealing with a situation too where a lot of customers in Haiti, mobile customers, both digital and app com, they have no access to the internet and they have no access to international phone calls and you can't even top up on the app with the digital cell because fiber optic lines were cut. So um, they're basically going to be in, in the dark of information. Um, the, the best thing that Haitian Americans can do is you continue to go to Haiti, okay? Because Haiti right now is going to take a huge hit Tourist wise, um, they, you know, people that I know personally who have gone to Haiti despite everything, this was a very scary situation. I have been in a situation like this in the past and not as a reporter. I've been, at, I've been in it as a reporter, but I've been at it, in it as a tourist visiting, okay? And it does leave a bitter taste in your mouth and it's a very scary thing. You don't think that you're going to go on vacation and things can turn. But honestly, that can happen anywhere. And I think that the first tourist that Haiti is, you know, is going to get um, is going to be the diaspora because we understand it. We, we're going to make excuses. We're not going to see certain things that other people may see. We're going to let things slide and we're going to continue to spend and invest. And that's what I would encourage people to do. And also, folks, stop going on social media and writing all kinds of crazy things. I mean, you have to think about what you write and you, think, you have to think about the impact. Yeah. The reality is, is that if somebody today is in Haiti and you're at a hotel and that hotel is charging you, at the end of the day, that hotel is a business. If you were in Egypt, if you were in the Middle East somewhere and you were in Europe and something, and something like this happened, of course the hotels are going to still charge you. Why do you think that they should charge you? This is, not, this is not their problem. You know, when you go on vacation, you get insurance and you make sure you have enough money in case something happens and you can't get out. And plus, you're flying during hurricane season. If, if it wasn't this, it could have been hurricanes. So I think that we need to put this into perspective. Um, and for Haitian Americans, I mean, I love you guys. And, you know, we often like to think that we're influential. But I have to tell you straight up, y'all ain't influential. I mean, first of all, if we were influential, we would not be paying $10 every time we go into the country. Because just because our last name is French, our parents are Haitian, but we still have that one thing that's missing. It doesn't say born in Haiti on your passport. So they say, I don't care. Give me your, give me your 10 bucks. You know, so um, you, ha you have to be realistic about the country and be re realistic about the challenges. I, you know, applaud this wanting to change the narrative, but let's also be realistic in the context in which this country is. And, and, and we have to understand the people on the ground. They are going to be forgiving to us because we speak Creole with, with an accent. They are going to be forgiving and loving because despite the fact that we speak with an accent or we don't speak it at all, we're still proud of our Haitian roots and we hold, and we hold on to it. We are the, the people who are sending money to them for school, for funeral, for weddings, for you name it. You know, you know we are that lifeline. Yeah. But let's be a little bit more understanding in terms of what they're going through. And let's accept. And I always tell everybody, you know, um, I never lose sight of the fact that it was one decision that my mother made that is the difference between where I am and where my cousins who are in Haiti, where they are. I could very easily have been in their position. And it's not because I'm living in the United States and I've had the you know, good fortune of a U.S. education and I'm a Miami Herald journalist that I should be judgmental um, in, towards their actions and towards what they have done. Everything has a context. And what I'm saying to people today is that the civil unrest that is, is as unfortunate as it is. It has a context. And I believe that it was just a matter of time. The question now is what happens next? Well, how does the population react? And how does this government that's in charge, how do they react? 
No, absolutely. Thank you so much, you know, for the updates, Jackie. Let's, I see people now asking a few questions. Guys, I, I can't hold on for too long because she has to get back to reporting. So she has to um, get back to um, reporting. So I can't hold on to her for too long. But I just wanted that um, I can get one or two I see questions. somebody said, I'm tired, of the, I'm tired of this BS. Well, you yeah. know. When you, when you have a country that's, you know, it's not going to change overnight, people. It's not, and it's not going to change just because it was an earthquake or an election. Absolutely. Do you have any updates as far as, like, when the airport will be open or anything so like the, airport, the airlines are saying? So the, air, so the airport is open, but what's happened is, for instance, as I mentioned, they canceled three of their seven flights and their date they, um, by chance, you know, by year. But for instance, this morning uh, now, which is where the Caribe Hotel, they were putting up barricades. So if you were at the Caribe Hotel and you had a flight, so um, it's a situation of let's see how the situation comes down. We're supposed to be getting some rain in the next couple of days because of Burrow, which is all, was headed to Haiti as a hurricane, by the way. Um, it no longer is, thank God. I have a small favorite, yes, but it is a tropical storm, and maybe that will sort of put a little bit of, it will cool down the situation, so to speak. Okay, guys, I'm reading your comments right now. Take one or two actual questions before I let Jackie go. Questions, guys, not opinions. So, like, really quick, if we have really two good questions, Jackie, you can answer one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we covered, like, most of the things I feel like everyone should know right there. Is there any hope? How do you really start with the change? I think we kind of went over that. Well, I, there's always hope, okay? There, there, yeah. there, 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 is, there is hope, and I think that, you know, we have to just continue to, to, to be a voice. We just have to, you know, and continue. I mean, you know, I get beat up all the time because they, people say I'm always the bad news bear. I am a news reporter. I write about news. And, you know, I love to do those feature stories. You know, it's funny, and I'm giving an example, that basketball story that I wrote this week, about Haiti getting kicked out of the FIBA. Well, I reported the story last year about how Haiti wanted to come back, to make a comeback on basketball in the international scene. And I didn't get to the story because things started getting crazy and I had to report on the news. And then when I finally do revisit the story, it's in what? It's in the context of a controversy. And while people are all screaming about the fact that Haiti got kicked out of this international basketball tournament, they lost sight of one fact. So today we're Haitians because we're paying basketball. But what happens when there's an election and we can't vote? You can't have it both ways. And that's what people said to me. The irony of this is that your own government doesn't welcome you and, and view you as Haitian when it comes to politics. But when it comes to sports, they want you to be Haitian. Those are things where you can address as a member of the diaspora. Someone just asked, why didn't the government raise gas prices incrementally instead of just doing it all at once? Well, and exactly. I mean, that's been the question. And, and, you know, that maybe in this case it hasn't been the action, but it was, you know, oftentimes with politics and politicians, they're a little bit sloppy on how they do things. And I think that, that in this case, you know, it was why did you do it on the day that, that Brazil played Belgium, but they thought maybe they thought that Brazil was going to win. I think that they took too long to do it, and the deadline is September that it had to get done. And I, and I think that the government also believed, because they had been running these pro-government ads on Teyanash and about the caravan of change, that they had a certain mandate and um, an endearment with the population. I think the government got a little bit too much ahead of itself in thinking that they can pull the trigger on this and they would not get the reaction that they did. I just saw someone saying that we need to talk more about opinion and everything else. I just want to kind of make this clear if you're just tuning in. This, we could sit here and have a thousand conversations and we all can have our opinions on what to do and not do. But like I told you guys, we're more here about educating, making sure you guys get the facts first and get the actual information before we just start stating our opinions. So that's what this... And I don't have an opinion. I'm a sport. journalist. I'm not, I don't have an opinion. I mean, everything I'm saying to you is based on no, 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 research or saying, talking... We yeah. should allow people, someone to oh, come okay. in. To, they, like, they want to talk about their opinion. We want to have a conversation where we all list our opinions. And what I'm saying is we can do that any time. But before we can do anything, we need to have an understanding of what happened and why it happened. And this was why this conversation 
you know, today was important. We can't start stating our opinions until we know what the facts are. And that's what we're I, yeah, to I just saw today. I just saw somebody say something about we don't have to wait for the Red Cross. But let me just tell you, I had a doctor just get, text me before I went on live with you guys that even she says even in war zones, ambulances get priority. And in this situation, they've had difficulties basically getting through. Everybody's concerned about the airport. But before I'm concerned about the airport opening, I want to make sure that the people who are getting to the airport are able to get a safe passage. And, and you know, this, this um, couple, this family that I was talking to, and you can read my story later, MiamiHerald.com backslash Haiti. We have a Haiti channel. You know, they were at a police station, which to me was a safe place. But there was always a possibility that the police station could come under attack. And I said, listen, the SWAT is going to come get you out of there, but you need to know where you're going to go. You have to have a plan A and you have to have a plan B. So you're, you know, you need to be safe. And that's what I say to everybody. You know, anywhere you go in the world, even in the United States, I was in the mall in December and I was running into a closet because there were people were screaming that there was an active shooter. You, you always just need to be prepared because you never know what's going to happen. Absolutely. There's people saying, how do they get in touch with their families with, um, with the whole Digicel situation? Do you have any updates? I saw uh, Martin Boo posted earlier that they're working on it. We have they are working, working on it. There were some lines that went up, but the problem right now is the fact that um, because of the unrest that the workers are being harassed and they're having difficulty to get getting there. And so at this point, no, we are you're basically kind of in the dark. Some people do have phones that, that are working. Um, if they have a digital cell or, or just, diff, just keep calling different phones to see if there's a phone that will ring because they're on different networks. Uh, it's very frustrating. I know not to have the information, but, you know, right now people are staying calm. People are sheltered in place. It, it's not a situation where, you know, we've got a war going on. And I have to tell you, as frustrated as Haitians are, when you're on the streets with them, you know, you can talk and you can negotiate your way sometimes around a barricade. And I haven't had anybody who's basically telling me that they felt threatened for their life. I mean, the situation in and of itself has been scary and, and volatile, um, that, that it could change at any moment. But when people have approached these guys, the guys have been very gracious because it's not about wanting to attack people but it's about standing up for what they believe they, they, they believe in and for them to make a statement. And if they tell you you can't cross or whatever, then you know what, you back off and you turn around and you try another route or you go back. So right now we have no updates on where the airports will be open or which the, ones are. Is Cape no, Haitian open? Nothing Cape like Haitian, that Cape Haitian, is o Cape Haitian is open. The airport technically have not, have, they have not closed. It's okay. just a question of the airline itself. For saying we, it's a civil unrest, and we don't feel safe enough to have our customers go in. What's the, what's the point of me flying? Jackie, I, I thought at the airport, and it. you can't get out of the airport, or oh, you can't yeah, get a taxi out of the airport. Blue to K patient okay, today. Spirit didn't. Not. Jack, I don't know if you can hear me, but the internet likes to port prince but Delta flew people, Your flew internet people is out in America was supposed to out. So like we're hearing you, but it's like Okay, you sound a little bit better. Okay, so you said K patient is open, so the airports are open, but it's a matter of the airlines not wanting to risk Okay, so they the okay, so it's not that all right, so it's not that the airports are closed. So the people that's asking how to get in touch with your family, like she said, just you know, um, just keep trying, try other ways. Um, I noticed that this internet has gotten like really worse for you, and we've held on to you long enough. I feel like we've kind of at least covered all the things like we needed to get from you before you go. So, anyone do you want to follow Jacqueline? Is Jack on?
Okay, so if you guys heard that, so it's it's on Twitter. It's Jacqueline Charles. Jacqueline, J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E, Charles. She basically updates you guys literally by the minute. So you can follow Jacqueline on Twitter and on Miami Herald. It's miamiherald.com forward slash Haiti. You can, she updates her articles like throughout the day. Um, and if you, you guys, I'm going to, trying to write it in the comment, but this thing is sideways. But um, it's Jacqueline Charles. You can Google Jacqueline Charles Twitter, Jacqueline Charles Miami Herald, and keep up to date with Jackie and everything that she's posting. And we'll do our best here to keep you guys updated as well. Um, so, okay. So for people that's just tuning in, most of the questions you're asking Jackie is already answered. So what we're going to do is save this live um, so you guys can watch it. It will be available on our, you know, live stream. Jackie, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you for taking this time out. I know, like, we pulled you away from work for a little bit, but I just thank you so very much for taking this time out and talking to us. All right, guys. All right. All right, guys. So, like I said, I'm going to keep this on. I'm going to try to that. Um, but I'm, I'll go ahead and save it on the live stream so you guys can still watch it and hopefully I, I'll be able to download it and post it other places to where you guys can get this information. I hope we were able to help answer some of your questions. So before we all start saying, you know, let's get together, let's do this, let's do this, let's make sure we understand what's going on and how we can actually help, what makes sense. Because we could sit here and talk all day um, about what we can and can't do, but who do we go to? Who do we take these demands to? Who, who, if we're going to protest, where do we protest? Like, where do we go? You know, guys, it just has to make sense. Like, you know, we can be as angry as we want to be. We can be as frustrated and sad and everything else. But let's remember, these people are actually down there dealing with the, dealing with what's happening, you know? So no matter how bad or how frustrated and angry you feel, just imagine, you know, how they feel. And since you're not the one that's in the immediate situation, let's try to keep, let us keep a little bit calm and then, you know, be clear ahead about making sure that we get a good understanding. So if we are going to come together, what does that look like? What's the actual plan? Who do we reach out to? Who Who's actually going to do something and not do something? Are they listening to us? Do our opinion matters? I mean, matter and everything else. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I have two other people that's in Haiti that said they wanted to do a live stream. But as you guys can see, the internet situation is not good. So if I can get them, we'll be back live again. And I'll let you guys know who. Um, Niska earlier wanted to talk to us. We had Samuel Damos that also wanted to talk. So let's see what their internet is, you know, how their internet is in Haiti. And if we can do that um, for now. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Happy Sunday. Thank you for everyone that tuned in and your questions. And yeah, guys, let's see where we go from here. Appreciate you guys.